GST law has provided separate provisions to determine the time of supply of goods and the time of supply of services. Mainly we have three types of supply. The first one is time of supply under forward charge. Second one time of supply under reverse charge and time of supply under vouchers. The seller is going to be a registered dealer. He collects the tax amount and he remits the tax to the government. Hello everyone, I am Arun Kumar, lecturer in Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Dear students, welcome to this new session on unit number 6, session 1 on the topic, Time of Supply. So, you will be studying this particular unit with respect to your 5th semester BCom who are studying under University of Mysore. So, dear students, in this session, with respect to the topic time of supply, we are going to discuss about what is time of supply and what are the different types we have and how to solve the problems with respect to time of supply. So, let us look into the meaning of time of supply. So, what is the time of supply? In order to calculate, in order to calculate and discharge tax liability, it is important to, to know the date when tax liability arises. Yes, to impose tax on a particular transaction, first we should have to know when the transaction is occurred and what is the time of supply of that particular transaction. Then only the tax liability will arise. So to impose the tax, to impose the tax, the time of supply is very much important with respect to GST. So, the date on which the charging event has occurred. In GST law, it is known as time of supply. Yes, to impose the tax, so when that particular transaction is occurred, that should be known by a particular supplier or by the GST authority. So, by then only, they will be able to impose tax on that particular transaction. So, this scenario is called what? Time of supply. So, GST law has provided separate provisions to determine the time of supply of goods and the time of supply of services. Yes, you will be supplying two kind of things. One is supply of goods and another one is supply of services. If you are supplying services, then the treatment will be different. The procedure to find out the time of supply of services will be different. In case if you are, you know, supplying goods, then again for that the treatment will be different. So, the GST law has provided separate provisions to determine the time of supply of goods and the time of supply of services. So, section 12, 13 and 14 of the GST Act 2017, section 12, 13, 14 of CGST Act of 2017 deals with the provisions related to time of supply. Yes, under CGST Act 2017, section 12, 13, 14, it gives us the guideline, it gives us the details about how to find out the time of supply with respect to supply of goods and with respect to supply of services. These provisions are also applicable to interstate supplies levied to integrated tax. Yes, this particular CGST Act is not only applicable to intrastate, it is also applicable to interstate supplies. It is not only applicable only for intrastate, it is also applicable for interstate supply. So, what is interstate supply? Again, the transaction between two different states or two different countries then we will be imposing integrated tax that is interstate supply or we will be imposing IGST. Whether it is interstate supply or intrastate supply, then the provisions with respect to section 12, 13, 14, these sections are same and will be give you the information with respect to how to find out the time of supply with respect to computation of time of supply of goods and time of supply of services. So, this is the background of time of supply. Now, let us move time of supply under different supplies. Yes, 
mainly we have three types of supply. The first one is time of supply under forward charge. Second one, time of supply under reverse charge and time of supply under vouchers. First one, time of supply under forward charge. So what is this forward charge? First, you have to understand what is the meaning of forward charge. So for that, to make it very easy, I will take three particular aspects. What is buyer? First part is buyer. Second one is seller. And the third one is government. Okay, buyer, seller, government. What buyer will do? The buyer orders the product. Buyer orders the product to the seller. What seller will do? Seller deliver the product to the buyer. So what is doing seller? Seller giving the product to the buyer. So buyer what he will do? What he will do? He pay the value of the product to the seller. That value is inclusive of cost of the product, profit plus tax. So cost plus tax. So how much he will pay? Let us say he will pay 150 rupees. He will pay 150 rupees. In 150 rupees, 100 rupees is the cost plus 50 rupees tax. Okay. So now the seller is receiving the tax. Okay. He is receiving the tax. Later on, what the seller is supposed to do? Seller is supposed to remit the tax amount, the tax amount of 50 rupees to the government. He is supposed to remit the tax amount to the government. This scenario is called what? Forward charge mechanism. So here in forward charge mechanism, seller is going to be the registered dealer. Seller is going to be the registered dealer and he is going to collect the cost of the product and the tax amount from the buyer. The seller is going to collect the tax amount and the cost of the product from the buyer and later on, this seller is going to remit the tax amount to the government. This process, this mechanism is called forward charge mechanism. So I hope all of you understood the concept of forward charge mechanism. Next one, time of supply under reverse charge. Under reverse charge. Again the example. So here we have the buyer, seller and the government. Okay, we have buyer, seller and the government. So seller sells the product to the buyer. So what he sells? He sells the product to the buyer and buyer what he'll do? He'll give only the cost, only the cost say 100 rupees to the seller and buyer directly pay tax to the government. Buyer pay tax of 50 rupees directly to the government. So here in reverse charge mechanism, seller is going to be a unregistered dealer. He is going to be a unregistered dealer. Okay. He is going to be a unregistered dealer. So in forward charge mechanism, seller is going to be a registered dealer. But under reverse charge mechanism, seller is going to be a unregistered dealer. So that is why buyer pay only the cost. Later on, buyer himself pay tax to the government. This mechanism is called reverse charge mechanism. So in forward charge mechanism, seller is going to be a registered dealer and he collect the tax and remit the tax to the government. This process is called forward charge mechanism. And in reverse charge mechanism, seller is going to be an unregistered dealer and buyer pay only the cost of the product to the seller and buyer directly remit the tax amount to the government. This process is called reverse charge mechanism. And the third one, time of supply under vouchers. See vouchers for example, uh, you are going to receive the vouchers from some malls or uh, gift coupons. So how that works? How to find out time of supply with respect to you know purchasing of vouchers? So we will get to know while we are solving the problem. So now let us solve the problems with respect to forward charge mechanism. So now what is forward charge mechanism? Forward charge mechanism is nothing but the seller is going to be a registered dealer. He collect the tax amount and he remit the tax to the government. Very simple. So 
in forward charge mechanism computation of time of supply with respect to goods and computation of time of supply with respect to services so with respect to goods and with respect to services the rules are different the conditions are different so time of supply of goods under forward charge mechanism time of supply of goods here you can see the word goods so if you are finding out the time of supply with respect to supply of goods these are all the conditions what we have so what are the conditions earliest of the following earliest of the following so what is it earliest date of removal of goods date of invoice and date of payment very easy so to find out the time of supply of goods with respect to forward charge mechanism earliest of the following so what are the conditions date of removal of goods date of invoice date of payment in these three earliest date you are supposed to consider earliest date you are supposed to consider as the date of time of supply of goods with respect to forward charge mechanism let us solve the first problem with respect to forward charge mechanism so from the following information compute time of supply of goods under forward charge so date of removal is given date of receipt is given date of payment is given so case 1 the first one 15th march 2022 18th march 2022 26th march 2022 so in case 1 date of removal of goods is 15th march date of receipt is when 18th march and date of payment is on 26th march so in these three which is the earliest date here you can see in these three which is the earliest date the earliest date is 15th march right the earliest date is 15th march so time of supply is 15th march case 2 date of removal of goods 15th april 2022 date of receipt 14th april 2022 date of payment 16th Ma April two thousand twenty-two. So in this three, which is the earliest date, the earliest date is fourteenth April. So here you can see fourteenth April is the earliest date, and the date of time of supply is fourteenth April two thousand twenty-two. Next one, case three, date of removal of goods first August. Next date of receipt sixteenth August. 2022 date of payment 19th august 2022 in this which is earliest date 1st august 2022 is the earliest date so here you can see 1st august 2022 is the date of time of supply next 4th october 2022 6th october 2022 10th october 2022 so which is the earliest date in these three 4th october so here you can see i have highlighted this 4th october so 4th october is the date of time of supply so this is how you are supposed to solve the problem under forward charge mechanism in date of removal of goods and date of receipt and date of payment in these three the earliest date will be the date of time of supply with respect to supply of goods under forward charge mechanism this is the first problem i hope all of you understood the problem so now let us move to the second problem with respect to computation of time of supply so from the following information compute the time of supply of goods under forward charge so five cases are given date of removal of goods date of receipt date of payment so the first case 1st jan 2022 date of removal of goods next date of receipt is when 15th jan okay date of payment is when 26th jan so in these three date which is the earliest date yes the earliest date is 1st jan is the earliest date so which date is the time of supply yes 1st jan 2022 is the time of supply in case 1 now case 2 in case 2 date of removal of goods is when 7th feb 2022 next date of receipt 16th feb 2022 and date of payment 
27 to 2022. So in this three, which is the earliest date? Yes, that is date of removal of goods. That is 7 to 2022. So date of time of supply is when? That is 7 to 2022 with respect to case 2. Case 3, date of removal of goods. When it is? It is on 3rd March 2022. Date of receipt? 13th March 2022. And date of payment? 30th March 2022. So in these three, which is the earliest date? Earliest date is, yes, 13th March 2022. So 13th March 2022 is the date of time of supply. Next case 4, 15th April 2022, date of removal of goods. Date of receipt, 18 April 2022. Date of payment, 24th April 2022. So in this three, which is the earliest date, the earliest date is, yes, it is 15th April. It is 15th April 2022. Next, case 5. Date of removal of goods, 19-6-2022. Date of receipt, it is 16th May 2022. And date of payment is 30th June 2022. So which is the earliest date in this three? Yes, it is 16th May 2022. So in these three dates, that is date of removal of goods, date of receipt or invoice and date of payment. In these three, the earliest date, the first date, the earliest date is going to be the date of time of supply with respect to computation of time of supply under forward charge mechanism again with respect to supply of goods. This is how we are supposed to compute the time of supply with respect to computation of value of goods with respect to forward charge mechanism. So I hope all of you understood the topic. So we'll meet in the upcoming session with few more problems with respect to forward charge mechanism. Until then, thank you all. Have a nice day. Namaste.